Welcome back to Power Lunch. I'm Lindsay Williams in Cape Town. In my capacity as a broadcaster for CNBC Africa, you don't get inside information, but you do speak to a lot of people that give you a few ideas as to what the mood is for the economy and for various shares. And one of the shares I've been hearing about over the last six months or so, maybe even longer, is Grindrod. After a fairly tough time, people have seemed to like it, fund managers in particular. And here's why, because its year-end results were released earlier today. Attributable income up 61%. We've got headline earnings per share up 22 percent good solid stuff there final dividend up 28 percent and conclusion of significant joint ventures and acquisitions etc etc in the power lunch johannesburg studio is the ceo of grindrod and that is alan olifier alan i've built you up quite nicely uh, there i must say but a lot of people that may have invested in grindrod 10 years ago would see a completely different company today not just shipping but full-blown logistics I think that's right, Lindsay. Over the last decade or so, we, we've been through a lot. Um, we've been through some, some really good shipping markets, generated significant income, significant return to sh uh, for shareholders. Um, we've reinvested a, a lot of that money into infrastructural strategy, infrastructural assets. And obviously with shipping markets having, having come off quite substantially over the last while, the earnings have come down but we, we're now starting to see returns from some of those investments we've made over the last few years. Well, let's talk about shipping, which is your original uh, business. And of course, uh, when people look at the Baltic Freight Index, for example, and see it plunging, and it's often linked to um, the, the fortunes of countries uh, like China, people, people automatically assume you're going to do badly, and that's to a certain extent correct. But you also have long-term contracts in place. Maybe summarize the shipping uh, division for me. Yeah, I, I think um, shipping has been very difficult. It, it has come down significantly over the last few years. And unlike other shipping cycles where largely that's driven by a reduction in demand and industrial uh, and uh, uh, reduction in, in infrastructure spending or development of, of industrial economies, this one has been driven by an oversupply of ships. So too many ships have been built over the last few years. It's, it's um, resulted in the market being flooded with, with new ships coming in, uh, in. At the same time, though, we have seen strong demand. We've seen continual demand for the kind of commodities we carry. And, and now we're also seeing uh, demand for oil product as well. Dry commodities, which we carry a, a significant quantity of, um, has, has in, in grown by about 7% year on year. We're expecting that to continue. Um, oil commodity has grown by 4% over the last year. We expect that to continue. So, yes, shipping, ca the dry cargo rates came down by, index came down by 60% last year. The tanker index came down by 17% last year. But at a pure operating level, we were still able to just about keep our head above water before impairments and value. So it, it shows that we, we have maintained a very low cost base through the market. And um, if there is and when the turn does come in those markets, we certainly believe we're well positioned in the shipping market. Uh, what I like about your results, I mean, apart from the numbers themselves, is the brevity with which you present them. I and mean, apart from all the reams of normal numbers that uh, need not detain me uh, for this interview anyway, there's only just there's one page. There's not there's not all this flowery stuff that a lot of uh, companies indulge themselves in. And you talk about strategic initiatives. Uh, the first is developing infrastructure to expand the capacity of the port of Maputo, uh, Maputo and also increasing the capacity of the Maputo coal terminal. How important is this to you? No, it, it's very important, a big part of the strategy. We, we have made significant investment there. We've introduced a very strategic partner in VTOL, one of the world's leading um, oil traders, um, as, as a partner to assist, not to assist us, but to stand next to us in development of the coal terminal. The port itself, we've seen that grow significantly since our initial investments in that port. It did 15 million tonnes of cargo this year, which is back to uh, its heyday. And, and our plan is now to develop that to 50 million tonnes, um, through, both through the main port and through our coal and magnetite facility. And that's one of the big projects we're working on at the moment. Uh, the feasibility study is, is into the final stages. Um, we're getting support from coal producers and, and the magnetite industry to support that terminal. And, and, and so now, and we're developing with Transnet the strategy to ensure that we get the right rail support to support 
the, the, the growth in that area. So it's all slowly coming together with infrastructural projects. These, these things don't happen quickly, but we are a long way up the road on it now. Quite right, and I think there were a lot of raised eyebrows when Maputo was first mentioned in the same breath as Grindrod, but you've proved the doubters wrong, I think. Uh, I hope that's right, Lindsay, but certainly we believe so. I mean, Maputo is strategically very well positioned to, to support both um, South Africa or, or South Africa and, and other areas like Malawi, um, Zambia, Zimbabwe, areas like that. So it, it's very strategic to the region. We've spoken about shipping, we've spoken about uh, the coal terminal, Maputo in general. What about the rest of the divisions? How did they perform? I think generally, um, with the exception of shipping, which we, we mentioned, they, all, the, all the other divisions did um, produce reasonable results. Um, the ports and terminals business as a whole did very well. Um, the the um, logistics businesses, clearing and forwarding and intermodal business did well. The transport business is still not performing as we would hope, but we have may, um, taken um, corrective action in that business and, and we certainly believe we are far better positioned. The, the bank um, financial services area did, did very well um, and, and it's a very exciting part of the business at the moment with the SASA um, social securities um, cards that we're busy rolling out. We now have seven million cards out there to, to social security receivers, and, and that's gonna grow to around about 10 million cards and produce very good annuity type income for the bank. So in, in general, it did well. Trading, um, the, the oil trading business did very well. The new coal trading JV, which we have with um, VTOL, had, had a good year. Um, the agri business and, and minerals business didn't perform as well as one would hope. But, uh, but again, we've got new manage management in those businesses and we, we're relooking our strategy in those businesses. Alan, how does um, financial services sit with a, a shipping and lo logistics company? I mean, it's almost as though, okay, it was a great opportunity and you seem to be quite enthusiastic about it. But it sort of almost uh, leads me to asking you whether you'll spin that off as a separate entity in the future. Uh, I think, Lindsay, I, got, I get asked that question quite often. And it, it isn't core to Grinrod's business. Clearly, the, the, all the other businesses stand alone. They, they don't require support from that business. There is some, some intergroup activity between them. So the bank does support some of the divisions in, in, in some of their funding uh, and, and projects that they, they look at. But, but really, the, the bank is a bit of a success story for us. It, it's grown from very small beginnings. Um, you've seen good growth year on year out of the bank. Not, not um, shooting the lights out, but good solid growth. Um, it's, it's run very conservatively, it's got a good management team, it's carved out a nice niche for it and from a shareholder point of view they must be very pleased with the kind of returns they're getting from, from that asset.